Hey guys, welcome to My Guard Up. Today we're covering maybe something you weren't really thinking about. We're going to talk about when you order a car service. Uh, for many of you, for an example, that might be Uber or Lyft. Uh, those are very popular companies that are across the country today that we use uh, a lot, uh, maybe other than a taxi. Uh, so we're going to kind of go the differences between those two and uh, some safety tips about that. So. We're going to begin today. First of all, whenever you order an Uber or a taxi or a Lyft or something like that, usually an Uber or Lyft, you order it on your app and you download and you do the whole thing. Oh, okay. I see I have one coming in about five minutes and I should be expecting a Nissan Altima in a bronze color and my driver's name is Mike. So at least I know what he looks like. I know what car looks like and I'm ready for that car pulls up. I'm looking at it. Okay, great. It matches uh, my description. I see a gentleman behind the wheel. It's a nice car. Looks like a, a, a nice guy driving. So I'm going to come up. Hi, are you here to pick someone up? I'm Mike, your Uber driver. Are you Cat? Hey, yeah, I am. All right. Nice to meet you. I'm just going to hop in. Okay, so here's where we go for our first safety tip. I'd like to thank my friend Darby down in Nashville for bringing this up because it's a really great point and it's led to a really great thing. Thanks, Darby. i got to give you a shout out. Okay, I'm going to get in. How many people actually get into the front seat of the car? So, I get in. What is the first thing that you want to do when you get into a car? Well, you know, hey, how you doing today? You know, make conversation. Obviously, I got to put on my safety belt because I want to make sure I'm safe while I'm driving. That's a natural thing. Now, what you don't realize is that we talk about personal space in self-defense. A lot of instructors do, and in many courses, even police officers. Um, I'm looking at usually a three-foot to four-foot rule. Uh, if somebody steps into your personal space at about three feet, you might feel uncomfortable. That person is in your personal space. They're getting very close to you, or even two feet, I think, would be uncomfortable. You're almost dancing, maybe. But that's really pushing the boundaries. But yet... People will jump into the front seat, and I mean more women maybe than men. Men maybe don't feel as threatened by doing it. You know, so from a woman's point of view, I'm jumping in the front seat of a car, all right, for a um, car service to take me somewhere. I have never met this driver before in my life. I have no idea who they are, where they came from, or anything about them. So I'm jumping into the front seat of a car of a person I don't know. And maybe nowadays, I think uh, we let our guard down a little bit because, hey, it's a really nice car. It comes from a company, so they must know their drivers really well, and they must know what's going on. And uh, he looks like a really nice person. They're dressed clean. The car is clean. Um, so I just jump in. <laughs> okay, so I jump in. I put on my safety belt. Now let's talk about that three-foot to two-foot rule. Uh, you know, there's an old wives' tale, you know, your, your great-gran or your great-nan would probably say uh, when she was measuring fabric or yarn, she would go from the tip of her nose to the tip of her finger. And she would measure fabric that way as about a yard. So you're looking at about three feet. So if I look at that, and I don't have a measuring uh, stick, but I take my finger out and I stretch it out. Where am I aimed at with my Uber driver? I'm beyond his face. In fact, I'm almost to his opposite shoulder. So definitely three feet or less on personal space. So, I mean, you know, we're very close here and I've never met him before. And, you know, and I'm in a parked situation here. This is not while driving. But uh, let's say, for instance, and it has happened, he says, oh, there's problems of calculation. I need to turn on this road or I'm taking a different route. Uh, I don't like the route it's taking me, so we're going to do a, you know, a different one that I know is a shortcut, or I need to pull over. Any excuse that they can find, you know, that would be a warning sign for you, is to maybe keep your guard up on that. And uh, if you're sitting in the front seat, and that happens to be where you went, uh, I want to point out, I've got my seatbelt on. I want you to show you how easily it is for him to control me in this position. Mike can reach across and literally grab with one hand my seat belt and wrap it around my throat, which also he can follow up with strikes. Once he has this choked and he's back here, now I'm being choked and now I'm being struck. And I'm worried about this, you know, because I can't breathe. He's choking me. It's strangling me. I'm literally being strangled and I'm defending myself like this. And he can hit me with something, spray me with something and, and attack me in, in that fashion. So I've got to be aware. So we've got that. 
also, I mean, he could grab my head, throw me into the dashboard. He could pull a weapon. He could spray mace at me. You know, he could do a lot of different things and uh, make it hard for me to defend myself because now I'm in close quarter. I've really put myself in a position where I should have my guard up because someone is in my personal space. But are you thinking about it? No, probably not. Hey, it's a great day. Light conversation. You know, he's taking me here or taking me there. I'm just trying to get to my destination. So those are things that we might not think about. So think about the actual facts of getting in the front seat by yourself to a car service. Okay, we just went to the front seat. So we were in the front seat and we pointed out some things about three foot rule as that from my middle finger out to my nose is about a yard to three feet. And that's being your personal space or less and that your driver would be less than three feet of your personal space. So now I'm looking at it, I'm getting in the back seat and I'm actually on the passenger side adjacent to the driver. I can see him and see what's going on and I can kind of tell like okay where we're going I see the the GPS maybe he's got uh, mounted on the dashboard or in the automobile itself and uh, you know I feel a little bit more comfortable because now as you can see I can barely reach him and I'm sitting straight back so I'm looking at that and I you know I'm barely touching the seat without having to stretch so my my three foot rule has gained some footage so I'm not he's not as much in my personal space and I feel maybe a little bit more comfortable what's missing back here that you notice with most taxis or even as you notice with a police car hopefully you've not had to be in the back end of a police car but <laughs> um, is that there's usually glass across here or a partition and uh, that is for the driver's safety and for yours is that that way the driver can't be robbed as easily or you can't be attacked from the front to the back um, when we're in the front seat and we're sitting next to someone in that three feet or less rule is that you're looking at 50 50 percent of engagement there I've got to fight you're definitely in that closed in qu close quarter combat zone where I have to engage and it's going to be a lot of kicks if I can get my legs up and we'll get into that on the next session of how to defend ourselves if I happen to be in the front seat and I don't remember to get in the back and I just wasn't thinking or you know and uh, we'll go on that from defense so now I'm in the back seat I'm on the passenger side as I said now I don't have my seatbelt on I'm not saying that you should not secure yourself by wearing a seatbelt uh, for me it is my choice uh, even if my Uber or Lyft or service driver says, can you please buckle up? You know, it's my right to say, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, reason being, that's just my own personal safety. That's how I feel. Um, I don't want you to think that that's something I'm advising you to do. Um, you know, I, we always want to be safe uh, in a motorized vehicle. But for me, I like to keep the seatbelt off so I can <laughs> move if I have to or get out. Um, I just prefer that instead of struggling and having to mess with it. It's just old habit. So I'm sitting in the back seat, and, and again, we've touched that three foot rule. And now I have to engage. It's probably about a 70 to 30% attack rate here compared to the 50 50 going head on in the front seat. Now I've got that distance, a little bit more advantage. I can see better. I know what he's about. I know what he's up to. I also can get into, like, I can be sitting back here if I feel uncomfortable anytime. If I've got my purse, and, or if I'm carrying my weapon, uh, for those of you who are concealed carry members, uh, hopefully you're with the NRA and uh, you've got your concealed carry, you know your rules, and uh, it is on you at all times. And, you know, or you, if you have mace uh, in your purse or something like that that you can use as a weapon, and we'll get into another segment on that too. It's amazing what you will find in a woman's purse. And for those, that's a dangerous journey to go on. <laughs> so let's say I happen to have mace with me, uh, or I happen to have maybe a pen uh, or a pen knife or keys or anything I can use as a weapon. Um, at this point, if Mike reaches back or the uh, driver reaches back to attack me, he has literally got to come. He's literally got to come out of the front seat halfway to get to me. He's got the seats here that are in his way. He's got the middle part that's in his way and he's going to come back to get me. Uh, I'm prepared because if I see it, I can still get my foot up and, uh, you know, or through. If it's hard for you and you're not physically able to get your feet up, understand. But looky here, I still have my hammer fist. I've still got my palms. I've still got my claws. 
And of course, I still got my inner coach going. I can still scream and holler and defend myself. If I have mace, you know, uh, using mace in a closed quarter, eh, eh, you know, you might uh, do something like that because you're nervous or you just want to make sure. Um, I would definitely want to use it and try to get out of the vehicle as quick as possible because it is going to filtrate within the car and you're going to have some of its kickback and uh, you're going to feel some of the the, uh, the mace yourself. So you're going to you know have that problem with the breathing and I want you to be safe and secure. But if I've got something else, just my hammer fist alone and being able to defend myself at a lot greater distance here, I have that separation which makes it easier for me to defend myself. Now... If he does have the child locks on in the back seat, or they do lock, and I can't get out, opening and opening, try to get out uh, because I want to get away, um, we're going to do another segment on tools and uh, things that you can have on your person to shatter the window if you have to get out that way. And we'll make sure we cover that in another segment. And then next, moving on over to behind the driver. Okay, so here we are. We've been from the front seat, uh, sitting next to a driver, and we've got that three foot or less rule of our personal space that's being invaded, and that 50-50% on fight there. And then I moved to the passenger side seat on the back side, where I've got more of a 70-30% chance and uh, in protecting myself and being able to strike, see what he's up to, or she's up to, whoever's driving me, uh, seeing more of what's going on in the front seat as to my location. Uh, if he does have a weapon, I can see that a little bit better from the side angle, if he's got a, a gun, or if he's got a knife, or what he has. Uh, so I do have that view advantage from there. And again, I point out that, look, there is no barrier between me and somebody I don't know, like in a taxi cab. You know, so my personal safety, I should be aware of some things. So now I'm sitting in, uh, the side, I'm right behind the driver, I'm in the back seat, right behind him. And, and when I point out some of the things we're about to do, um, I do have to say it, this is not while he's driving down the freeway, or while he's motoring about on the highway or anything in the streets. I doubt he's really going to start attacking you while being moving. Uh, you know, I did have somebody ask me that, so I said, I really, yeah, you're not going to want to start messing with the driver and kicking and, and shoving at him, although I have seen it happen. Uh, you know, you, because now he's controlling a vehicle that you're not going to be able to control very easily. So we want to make sure that when he stops or pulls over or does something that's, you know, out of the norm or you feel uncomfortable with about defending myself or getting out of the vehicle. So he's directly in front of me. Now, if Mike has to reach around or my, you know, the driver, when you're looking at, he's going to find me. I am literally in my own space back here. He's like, where, where, where are they? He's literally going to come around to get me, okay? And he's, you know, he's got to unhook his seatbelt to make sure he can be mobile to come back. And look how difficult this is going to be for him to even, I mean, even if he grabs and tries to reach around, that's awkward and not a lot of mobility of strength on him in this part. He's really going to have to, you know, stress a lot to get back here to get me. Um, I can strike. I can move all over the place. I've got this whole back seat to myself to be able to move around and freely defend myself. Now, I know we talked about when I sit back about the three foot rule. Notice maybe the tip of the finger as an example, uh, but not exact measurement, but just kind of a ballpark figure. Is that here's my three feet. He's still a little bit, but I have this whole seat in the way. This is the barrier that helps me protect myself. Now, if I feel really uncomfortable and he hasn't taken his seatbelt off, I do have the option to, to grab up here, reach around, pull the seatbelt, and you'll see I'm snaking my hand around, under grabbing, not over grabbing, which it, I can over grab. I like to under grab because it gives me more, more force to pull, and uh, then I have a free hand, whether I'm striking or if I do have mace or something, or literally choking him out, um, is an option uh, in there. If he has his seatbelt off and he's already taken it off, I still, again, he's got to get past the seat and the, and the, the seat uh, partition in the middle. He's still got to come back here to get me. And, and that might be something that he actually has to do. But by then, I'm hoping that your senses have been up, your guard is up, and you're already prepared for it, and you've already got your defense mechanisms and maybe your weapons about you, and you're ready to defend yourself. 
But these are just some points that we like to point out and make is that simple things that we don't always think about and that we debate about. Um, as females, especially, you're getting into a, a man's car uh, willingly and you don't really know anything about them. And I will point out that most companies don't do, a, you know, really heavy background checks. Like, I know they're thorough and they do simple, but they don't do finger background checks and things like that to where, you know, if you're going to do something else, you have to have fingerprints done by the FBI, Homeland Security, or the Bureau of Criminal Investigation Services in your state uh, to do most other things. So that's something to be aware of as well, is that they only do very simple background checks.